Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Film Voyage with Q. Thank you so much for doing this, sir. Welcome on White Bird Trails. Thank you. Bye. Let me start off with the thing uh, with acknowledging that what kind of brought you to our attention, and of course, it's going to be Gandu because we in this like you know we got access to your cinema through Gandu only and. Mm. Uh, this is, I, I'm not sure if you know this, but post 2010, every student or everyone who has ever thought of making a short film for some reason had used black and white, for some reason used on tele lenses. And it all, I think, goes back to Gandu. So, what do you think made Gandu the film that it eventually went on to become? Oh, okay. Um, first of all, Thanks for having me and um, thank you Canon for not giving me a single camera or a single lens ever. Post 2010, as you rightly said, mm, there was a sharp spike in the, <laughs> in the sales of DSLRs. <laughs> you know, a, a really fuckball camera called 7D. <laughs> Quite bad actually, till they got, got to 5D. I love it. It was, you know, my instrument. Um, so how did Gandu become what it? I don't know, man. I, I really think that it's a, it's it's time, right? Um, nobody else did it. That's the only reason that I can think of. There's no specific reason that I can think that somebody like me, complete loser, will actually do something like that. Okay, and, and, and it was largely fueled by that, the fact that it was, uh, Gandu happened because I was deeply into documentaries those days and I had laid out, out a, a really killer plan to make a huge co-production film called Sari. I bought the camera because of that, because of that film, because I could... With, with the 70 and with a 50 or a 100 lens, I could look at the warp, warp and weft of the sari and the details and stuff. At, the, at that same time, two things happened. One was that while I had made Love in India already and got uh, acknowledged for it, people in my fraternity, my peer group, Polka, you know, Kolkata uh, intellectuals, Indian intellectuals, film enthusiasts, uh, they really told me that, dude, come on, you are not a filmmaker, okay, and this is not a film. So I was like, oh shit. Now, one thing is that um, while specifically uh, figuring that co production out, there was a massive fuck up. Of, with my visa. There were 17 people who were in France at that time and I had got them all together from all around the world. La, 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 la. I fucking couldn't go because one guy in that time in the French embassy has, has forgotten to stamp my passport. Oh, I was not, it, it's true. I was not, it, it was not that I had been denied visa. On Saturday, I got the passport back without a visa. And Sunday, I was supposed to go. Next week was the pitch. We lost a lot of money. We are a very small company. We put everything on development, you know. And I was sitting with my friend, Shurujit Sen. And I was thinking, what the fuck? Is that guy the Gandhi? Or am I the Gandhi? Or is everyone else Gandhi for calling us Gandhi? What the fuck is going on? We have to wrap up this company. And for the second time in my life at that point, I was totally bankrupt. And at that point, I thought, okay, if we go out, man, we'll go out with a bank. I have a camera. We have an edit set. Let's make a film. And that's how Gandu happened. I think it was I guess. I think it was really the time. I was, I was just a messenger or, or some kind of vessel. Because the film had its own thing, man. It, it made me more than I made it. Wow. That's a very profound thing to say. And uh, 
of course like you talked about the second time you went bankrupt the first time you went bankrupt was after your first film i guess and yeah. uh, you talked a little bit about uh, after that when you made after you'd made a, uh, a documentary and you were pitch, you were going to pitch love in india the next day and uh, you, it was just you had cooked it up in your head a day before you didn't have any supporting material and you got the film what was that pitch about like what did you do in that pitch um basically i i there was this really insanely crazily talented woman called Fleur uh, who was a friend of mine. I met her that time. Really beautiful Dutch girl. So basically the full pitch I flirted with her. That was it. <laughs> I was like, Fleur, you know, all I want to do is to kiss you. But you know, you're European. You don't know how to kiss. We showed you. We, we taught you. While we were kissing, you were rubbing noses. So, you know, why don't you come on stage and let me show you how to kiss? That was my pitch. Everyone fell for it. The point is that, you know, the thing is that you know, the documentary world or, or the world of parallel cinema takes it really, takes the, take themselves really seriously. Art filmmaker and show a documentary. Gujarat mein jaake baitha hon. Yeah, cool. Yes, true. However, the point is a person like me, who's a Gandu, nobody, hasn't studied, hasn't gone to film institute, doesn't know nuance. Okay. I'm like the, I was pretty much like the guy on the road uh, that I'm not anymore because I, I am now a filmmaker. At that point of time, I was pretty clear that uh, I really did not want to make the kind of films that everyone made. I did not know what kind of films I wanted to make. I had no clue. I was trying to figure it out. But with Love in India, what happened was that I could present. I was so excited by the fact that I would hustle these white people. Um, because uh, that pitching forum, I wasn't going to go there. Because I'm, I'm deeply uh, suspicious of white people deeply suspicious of any institution. This was happening at SRFTI, la la la. But my friend uh, and mentor and longtime collaborator, Shamul Parmukar, who's, uh, who's taught me editing, taught me a lot of things about filmmaking. <clears throat> he, being a crazy miser that he is, he doesn't even give you tea when you visit him. He's that kind of a fuck face. He paid my fees. For, for that docket. And he said that, you, you know, I, I don't know. You have to fucking come. You will, you check it out, you will get it. Because nobody else is getting it. Docket had happened before, a year before. And this was the second year. And yes, I, I got there. And now, if you have to get into docket, you will have the, you know, your uh, project worked out, you have to do form filling and all that. Back in, back that time, there was nothing that way. Shamal had put in my name, I was in the panel, and I was sitting there listening to these people, all Europeans, all white, tell us that actually what we want to do is to let you tell your stories your way. <laughs> I was like, motherfucker, hello. <laughs> and the next day, I was like, okay, if, if I... I will, I will make my two lakh film, man. I, I was already making them. So I said, okay, if I am, am to pitch something outrageous, I will say, okay, I will make a film. I have no idea what film it will be. I will study myself, my girlfriend at that time, my immediate family, my immediate circumstance, my city, then my country and go outward in concentric circles and try to understand why the fuck don't I understand the idea of love? And why do I keep thinking about fucking? So, and this, this was a universal uh, theme. So I, I guess what, what struck them was the fact that uh, I did not know what I wanted. But I was very sure of the fact that I didn't know it. 
so when you were making love in india so has a, has like gargi sir you must know her she uh, showed us uh, love in india as part of our curriculum and uh, uh, i i was absolutely blown away by it and i was and i really because i had i'd loved your uh, feature films and narrative films uh, and this was uh, this was something else it was love in india but it mainly focused around the confusion between love and sexuality and what she said was uh, is something very interesting she said that uh, it's seen through the eyes of an adolescent male this film that's the concern that she had what uh, what do you think what do you, what do you think makes that film you know be like that because it was a dick making the film <laughs> <laughs> and the dick wasn't very you know um sorted out <laughs> it was a undo <laughs> dick she's totally correct i had no idea what i was doing and i i never ever thought that i could ever make an objective film i am a ma- street motherfucker and i don't really know much i know only stuff that i have seen and i have ingested and that's a particular kind of substance i'm very aware of the kind of substance that i use and and through this use and abuse uh, i try to find out things about myself and also about the craft that i'm in in this case filmmaking i'm not saying that filmmaking is the only craft that i practice i don't want to believe that i'm never i was never a a a, a, a complete filmmaker i will never be but uh, with love in india i thought okay you know all this talk about indian male and how mm, how fucked up he is where's the fucking data i haven't seen a single film which tells me exactly in those terms how i used to sit and you know pontificate with my friends about some girl and they would and they then we would all circle jerk off where's that narrative to why is it that in every city every town every house in india there are boys who do this but the film they are watching is something completely different and so there's a great gap between your immediate reality and your projected fantasy and this uh, this is something that troubled me politically about my country and my state and my people and yes it is adolescent because that dick is out of control that dick does not know what the fuck to do yes it is a boy because when i was making love in india i had no idea about devatattva i had no idea about duality about fluidity about many many things that i came to know of since that film through that film that film taught me a lot of things made me who i am and uh, 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 and uh, and i think that that was a critical like growing up stage and which is why very uh, succinctly gargi puts it she knows me a lot, really well and she reads me really well she's an extremely wise woman has been extremely helpful and and a mentor at a very uh, pivotal point of my life and uh, correctly she calls it an adolescent boyfriend i have no no problems with that <laughs> yeah so uh, as you mentioned um, the politics is your your immediate surroundings and the politics of it is what you're trying to understand through your films after you made love in india what, what did the questions that you uh, had in mind while the onset with the onset of that film were they answered in any way no no we had a great festival run i went places la la <coughs> but <coughs> what was clear was that india wasn't ready for this shit eh? nobody wanted to watch a film like that they were still driven by other things you know other like pop culture issues so while i was superbly you know i had a chip on my shoulder because i did not go to film school because i was a nobody i had to prove that 
venture i can also make art films but then it struck me that what the fuck am i making art films nobody is going to watch nobody watches fucking dudhadev dasgupta why should they watch me that motherfucker knows something you know i have no clue so at the bar at the same time i realized that dude i am sitting here i have access to films from around the world sitting wherever in colombo or in calcutta i can watch these things that are resonating tremendously with me time is changing really fast this is you know the 90s where where i found myself 90s going into the 2000s digital technology came in the internet came in the world was shifting and i was like dude i was watching a lot of porn as i was watching films so at a certain point i think my whole, my interface got uh got got totally messed up i i couldn't tell between a tom ticker film and a porn anymore somewhere they they merged merged you know if i couldn't jerk off if i didn't physically get affected by a film i didn't consider it to be a film so i i have always been into physical cinema as is, as has been very clear perhaps a lot of students of cinema may not know know this or let me just clarify um if you are a filmmaker or if you are a lover of anything anything books you are a reader will you read everything no if you are a if you are an avid music uh lover do you listen to ravi shankar and prodigy can you understand them each of them how the fuck is it possible man and and you i will ask any friend and says are i i love music any kind of music just play i love music that means motherfucker you have not done any homework and that's how a whole country was shaped that pop culture told us for 30 40 30 years from the from the 80s boss don't think you don't think you are a current you have work whatever you are a fucking laborer you have no brain i will give you some relief what is the relief please tell me you know in in bank thailand there's this thing called uh, the you know um, happy ending so you get a massage and a jerk off okay because that concept is simple if you were born for a massage why the fuck can't you get a jerk off you will come back and jerk off yourself only no why are you not standing up to that fucking portrait of yourself the turkey man that you are why i'm aren't you just facing that and being okay with it then to show your dick no your small fucking ass dick yeah. that is making you do all this so you know that i i i think a lot of things in my mind is like film for me is just a medium it is i have very little um emotional involvement with the with the medium as we got up said once that if there were other media if there was other media that helped me broadcast my stuff uh in a better way i would do that wow. so as you said uh, the consumerist market mentality of even images that you know we are being fed images and you you very openly said that you see yourself to be like a dj of cinema and uh, this in a consumerist setup you're taking images you are consuming images all around and you're taking it and you're breaking it down you're dissecting it now with no that we'd like to know how do you do that what's your process behind doing that that's temporal you know 
it's very difficult to give an overview of that. But what is that image that is important right now? At that time when I made Gandhu, my problem was that I made image in Love in India. Mm. It was a flat HD image shot with camcorders. People refused to call it cinema at that time. I was like, okay, what do you think is cinema? And realized after some time, depth of field is what they thought cinema was. <laughs> I was like, okay, fine, dude. If that's all that needs for you to think that this is cinema and that is not, I'll give you that. And every time I've been bankrupt, I have made a film three times. All three have been super successful and made me. It was, it was done out of fucking spite, right? <laughs> I got bankrupt because I was trying to do something artistic, louder. And I realized that I'm a Gandu. I can't do that. That's not me. So I will go bankrupt. And at that point, I what I can do is I'm a kind of punk rapper. I can write a punk song and do a show, dude. That will burn the fucking hall. Yeah. And, and, and at that time, my only goal is to burn the fucking hall. There's no other goal. I'm not trying to convince you that, oh, wow, look at this poignant piece of art. No. No, no, no. I want to grab your balls. I want to kick you in the nuts. I want to, you to tell me that this is not some fluffy fucking popcorn dream. No, no. I, I'm suffering. You also suffer, motherfucker. <laughs> And at that time, I'll give you a hard on and then make you suffer. So that, that, that's something about physical cinema really pushes me because, you know, one of the things I've spoken about even earlier in other uh, interviews is the fact that, you know, post 70s, 80s, the art filmmaker, nobody really talks about Navaras and all that shit. Right? Everybody's forgotten. Or maybe only... You know, you learn it in FTI and then you come out and you make Salman Khan films. Right. But there was such a thing. There's, there's this, there, there are these, um, it's, it's a very uh, texture driven thing. And what we see in popular culture in India is one or, or max two rasas being used for, for fucking 60 years or more. Now, there are seven more. And I really admire Vipats as a Russ. And I want to work inside that Russ. Now, you can, you can tell a love story, you can tell a horror story, anything can happen. But my uh, being is, 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 uh, is kept fueled by that Vipats Russ. And if you can, if people who are watching, if they want to know, just, just Google man. And you'll know that the, the tricks of our storytelling are really nuanced, heavily nuanced, which as I became a filmmaker, I got to understand. I do not, um, I cannot agree with the Occidental three act structure. I don't want to tell stories about retribution. Okay. I don't. And that's why, okay, you are saying can't do this, can't do that. More, uh, I have asked around a lot of people who have claimed that they, they've loved Gandu or critique Gandu, whatever. And I asked them this what happened in the last 20 minutes of that? I was coming to that. <laughs> yeah. I was coming to that. Yeah. All of you motherfuckers are constantly thinking that climaxing is the only, only goal in life. Climax. You know, that sense of fulfillment. It's not fulfillment. It's entitlement. You want a necessary end. 
that it will satisfy your ego. The small person that you are and that and, and the consumer market is feeding you that, is giving you that in three act structures, in retribution stories, in violent stories. When I became a filmmaker, a uh, uh, primary uh, thing that I did was to give myself, I was a big fan of at that time Dogma and Las Vonsier, I don't like him anymore. But any, at that time I was a big fan and I was also a big fan of Five obst Obstructions. It, was a, it, it is still a killer film. Uh, have you seen it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I gave myself five obstructions when I became a filmmaker. One of them was that I can't use any violence. No gun, no violence can be used for 10 years. 10, ten years. years. If I survive 10 years doing what I want to do and not using these tropes, then I can use. That's why I could make garbage after 2016, I was like 2006 to 2016. I was, I was, I had given myself those options. I would not do that. You cannot use a kid. No fucking children. So easy, but they just put a child. No, everyone will feel so nice. Ah, uh, but say get there. Uska pocket maro ya. Uska usko rona hai. Yeah, come on. You know. So I, the, those were clinical things that I had told myself. Can't use kid, can't use violence, can't use big uh, mirror, which means that you know the camera has mirrors inside, right? And the mirror size determines the industry code. The, in, the industry wants the mirror to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, so that then there are six people looking after the camera. And nobody's looking at what they're shooting. And I hated that. So one of another thing was that it will always be small camera. It will always be the lowest fidelity that I could find at that point. So that was that was really insane that uh, in Bandu we could unleash physical cinema in a way that when that credit sequence came in the middle, of, not in the middle, but at the end of the film towards the end. I have screened, this film was screened everywhere in the world and I've seen e everywhere. People got up, they started leaving. Okay, and then they stopped. And they were like, fuck. Now they could not, you know, they couldn't find their original seats anymore. You know? <laughs> and now they had to fucking figure out what to do with their asses. It is so beautiful that, that anarchy, the fact that you're, you are affected, but you don't know what happened. Something happened, yes. What the fuck happened? Did Lando die? Is he still alive? Is he playing with ADF? What the fuck is going on? So I, I thought that uh, for me, it was the fourth act was like if you had give, given me all the things in the world which would make me uh, make the film that I really want to make, that's the last way it is survive. The other three acts are for you. I'm working you, I'm playing, I'm not telling a story. There's no fucking story. Okay. I'm, I'm hoodwinking you. I'm hustling you. Okay. If you're in Calcutta, um, I live in South Calcutta and there's, a, there's this place called Kapuria Lakes, which is our only green spot around. And when we were growing up, it was, it, it's like a mini, for scene like this, it's a it's a it's it's a pink light district, Food, not fully red light because you can't really fuck, but they jerk you off and you know they 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 ask you when you're going by, kire like, hey you want to sit? I always grew up and I, I I was always haunted by that line, kire bojbi. Like two words, man. And it used to give people hard on. How? People as in men. And those chicks were working the men. Man. They worked the men of the street. And I wanted to learn how to do that. I wanted to be a street whore. I want to say, Kire Bojbi. 
to everybody. I'll tell you about it. Just come and stick. Something will happen in these seven minutes, which you know you may you will not like, but you <laughs> you will experience something. You don't know what will happen actually. And that's a, and there's a brilliant way the way you do it. It's like and it, this is something that you know helps me bridge the session towards Tasha Desh as well. Is that uh, in Gandu and in Tasha Desh, both the films, there's this use of repetition that you do, of like you know. I mean, I can't speak the language. It's like, uh, why? Uh, why do you want to leave? Why do you want to leave? Why do you want to leave? And even in Gandhi, he's uh, asking this question: Ki, uh, Would I uh, die if I fall? So repetition, as far as like uh, when we understand it, is like it's it completely breaks the essence of what is being said. What are you hoping to achieve when you take a text like Tashir Desh and you do that? Well, at the beginning of this. Uh conversation you you mentioned the jockey bit and i really i really believe that that's who i am i i i, I admired scratch artists i am a rapper okay i i really like djs they are my you know backbone they give me the beat and do you know about scratching no okay uh so in the 70s what happened was that mm, there emerged this new form where mm, a few black men mm, they were trying out this new technique where they would take a record a turntable and that's thus they were called turntablists they would take a baseline from one record the groove from another record okay so these are two different songs playing playing live the record is turning okay there's a bass line that this motherfucker has to find which is clean right you can't have a drum track on it can't have vocals on you have to get a clean bass line maybe you get it for four bars now that motherfucker is putting that baseline on an endless loop but it's analog it's not digital he's not cutting it and pasting it he knows exactly where that fucking baseline drops with his finger is pushing pushing pulling pushing pulling pushing pulling this is the repetition that you're talking about, which I am utilizing in filmmaking. It's really scratching. Okay. Scratching also is is a is a is a very fine black art, and I'm very fond of black culture, and, and I, I you know learned a lot from that scene. Uh, it is also scratching is an extremely um, um, happy sensation you can try it out nobody can see it because the camera is on your face right now you can try taking your finger and scratching something and it'll feel really nice now i was thinking that what if i would you know instead of ah, i make your film this is my vision venture no i'm just scratching it's feeling really good <laughs> you know yeah, but when you're taking on the Tagore, and there's obviously, you know, uh, Tashir Desh is a, a very layered text. So sometimes in the form, don't you think that the layers, they kind of get somewhere lost or dilapidated? Doesn't matter. I'm trying to make you dance. I'm not trying to tell you Tagore story. No, but at, at least like the, the way, you know, there's this feminist approach that you've taken in the film, which comes across beautifully. But... Of course, there's, but doesn't and, resolve itself. That's what you're talking about. That's uh, we spoke about that. I am not going to give you a fucking resolution. <laughs> it's a four act structure. It's called Kisho Tenketsu. It's it's not. It will not give you resolution. You are looking for a. You are looking for protagonist. There's no fucking protagonist. I hate Rajput. 
<laughs> fucking pretentious bastard. Why do I have to tell his story? But it took, but it, but it took like forty minutes uh, of the first. Yeah, three because of the because now because Tagore himself is the Rajputra, right? <laughs> the fucking bourgeois thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is a landlord motherfucker. That's him. I'm sure uh, for me, I'm like Dadu. Here, here you are. This is what you are. You are playing fucking TT endlessly, jerking off. But yeah. at the same time, the there's so much. Um, everyone's jerking off, man. Right? And mostly, uh, the world has been created by men with serious patriarchal values, with serious misogynistic traits. The world is not equal. The world is not fair. The world is not comfortable. Life is mostly misery and strife. And the fact that you as an Indian think that film is going to, is, is Chanduba, then Chuck, I don't agree with that. I can't, I will not agree with, I will put you in your, in, in that Jhandu bomb up your ass. You'll be extremely, you know, uh, uncomfortable. So the last act of Tashi Desh, where everyone wanted resolution, it was such a beautiful film. Oh my God, I'm so, oh my, now please, please finish me. Finish, make me come. I will not let you do that. No, fucking call me a bastard for the rest of our adventure. Dekha, oh, kar sakta us, ua nahi. You know, last me jaage kuch ho gaya adventure. Jam nahi. You know, didn't land it. I don't want to land it. It's not that structure. What if I told you there's no front door to the house? Yeah. You will, yeah, you will, would you be waiting outside? Nope. No, no. Nah? Nope. You'll find the way inside from the back, from the side. Why are you asking me to make the front door? So I refuse to take that, you know, take that ownership or that responsibility. Yeah. But when you're making, like, for example, when you're shooting and you have a very closely you know, close team. And suppose mm-hmm. most of the times you shoot it with uh, yourself with someone else. But when you're not shooting it yourself or when you're not editing it yourself, how do you communicate this thing that, dude, there's not going to be a front door and, you know, you have to find ways of, you know, that uh, scratching that you were talking about. How do you oh, communicate man, You have to do it yourself. The DJ has to spin. There's no other way. You can't tell somebody to spin your track. It will never be the same. It will be another thing if, if, if they are good. Turntables, and there are many great turntables, much better than me. But all I'm saying is that it would wouldn't be my my set. My set will be that you know at one thirty I'll come on and I'll make you dance for forty five minutes. It'll be killer. We'll have a great time. That's all that I want. Now also I want that maybe you'll get laid after that. Because I'll release that energy which will, you know, champion these kind of other shit. What porn does. So, like, so, so that makes you an otter in that sense. Along yeah, with I want, always wanted to be an otter. I had no intention of being a technical film director. I, was, I can't. I don't know it. I can't break a scene down. I don't know. I had great trouble understanding uh, access and all that. I still don't get it. So why the fuck can't I be here? <laughs> why? So I keep moving. You know that that one of the things is that dance, which is which I could really try out in Tashi Desh properly. Also, uh, as you talked about the physical cinema and your fascination with it, is that the reason why when you shoot uh, the spatial element of your film, the spaces and everything, they kind of as you mentioned, like uh, depth of field is what attracted those elitists. So, uh, is that the reason why you mostly focus on even if even if it's say uh, that cyber cafe girl asking Gandhu to just you know do the beatboxing, and the camera is so uptight. I mean, 
Is that the reason why you do that? No, there was no space. That's why I did that. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> there's no space. There's, it's a small fucking space. I could only stand there. That's why. I, that was the only angle I had. But then, but no, you follow that consistently. Yeah, know? yeah. But but I I am I I totally totally be, I become being I am in a trip at that time. Inside a trip, I believe these things that they're talking to me. Cyber cafe ventures will tell me how to shoot. I don't have to shoot. I am not a master. I am not. Again, I'm saying a filmmaker has to have a grand vision. Are if you can see the film in your brain already. Watch no. Why, Why are you making it then? Yeah. I want surprise. I want the film to make itself. I will just be the conduit. You know, if there's a story that's trying to tell itself and can't tell in India, these kind of stories can't be told. I was told that you are told that, and even now people are telling people. No much. अरे वो क्यों ने कर दिया हो गया बेचता है अभी कुछ को कुछ मिल रहा है क्या नहीं मिल रहा है ना तुम करो ना ठीक से जाके do a love story and do a proper fucking do a all I wanted to keep doing was that tell people to know you you you, you have this is another path and and that that's why cinema verite that's why real life <clears throat> that <clears throat> cyber that cyber cafe is not a setup it's not a set it's a real fucking cyber cafe and i didn't choose the game that gandu would play there though there were already kids playing that game so when we got there kids are playing game i'm saying oh brilliant that means this is gandu gandu is playing game mortal kombat fine that's where we are going because that's already these kids are doing that i can just shoot them and they're fucking killing it you know this is not an extra that screen is not a prop that's a fucking cyber cafe i am a documentary filmmaker i have just placed my fiction in this reality i have a vision of a guy called gandu who's a rapper who lives in howrah this is not true there is no gandu in howrah no rickshawala in howrah admire bruce lee but why not yeah in my mind I, my best friend was a which was it was a homage to my best friend from who so showed uh, you porn my for the first time huh who so showed you porn for the first time yeah yeah who, who introduced me to porn and saved my life uh, and so i'm eternally indebted to him and it was like a homage to get into very small places for small spaces because that's what they have right i saw that you know choti boy which was a book that he showed me and he used to live in this like a hole basically 6 by 8 or some really ridiculous sized room and uh, i still remember that i that was one of that's one of the most erotic experiment experiences of my life so i have a great regard and respect for these small places small spaces therefore they talk to me therefore they give me that angle that you are thinking oh fuck kaise liya angle anybody else would have possibly thought oh yaar yahan pe light nahi hai and i'm like no it's not lit i can't light it there's a great deal there's a five stop different gap between the outside and inside and any dop would have tried to balance it and bring it down to one and a half that's what you thought yeah. Right? yeah and it's not that i don't know that alon all i'm trying to say is i am trying to defy that i am trying to work with that space more than the elitist dop who comes in with a big camera and thinks this is my space i will show you no no that's not my space i am not showing there's a space like that in howrah I just happened to be there with one. Yeah. So uh, now coming to after uh, Tashir Desh, coming to your documentary on uh, Navarun Bhattacharya. Now there's one thing I've noticed about your documentary, and this is something that you even said uh, in an interview as well that uh, 
you try to keep yourself like the way Taka- takashi miike uh, is like you know detached yeah, from i mean you know six different films if you show uh, and one can't say that's takashi miike but somehow i always find you placing yourself in the documentaries or the films and very deliberately it's not it's almost like you're not even trying to keep yourself out of there so what what is what the what is this whole thing about you know trying to also be like mickey and also like being you in there because even in the documentary you didn't contextualize uh, nabaranda you know you were and you said it openly that it was you were more uh, interested in the dynamics of the conversation that you had so oh yeah where where the why there is contradiction uh well i think the mickey factor is it to <clears throat> that he is my daddy uh the other thing is that i like his rasa he works with vibhav vibhavs that's why i feel so close to him sure. he's a master of that form sure. uh and and i wish to learn from him however uh my intention and his intention are not similar at all i have a political goal he is a filmmaker he is work he is a hustler in the industry in the japanese industry Right. I am not a hustler in the industry. I don't even participate in the industry. Right. So, uh, for me, it, it it has always been very highly subjective. So I am not ever saying that I am going to show you the film that maybe someone else can make. I am already claiming that I am going to show you something that you never see otherwise. How will I make that? I'll put myself into it. That's it. that's what you can't see right you can't do that i can only put myself and it is my view it is my lens why the fuck should i beat around the bush that's patriarchy when you when you are seeing subjectively you know and iskowski and tarkovsky are uh, the masters are making films which they have they have envisioned everything it's fucking mis- misogyny you are treating the film as a work as an object and you are benefiting you are getting the orgasm yeah what's the film getting is the film orgasm did you ask <laughs> so but you you ha- you you are coming from a political agenda, like all your films are of course politically motivated but and especially navar and bhattacharya's documentary it has to be and so aren't you trying to get that politics across to people through the documentary and for that don't you have to contextualize what uh, was he all about no no i just need to contextualize myself and keep myself uh like a good joker will you come to my circus that's all that i need to do i need to constantly reinvent reinvent myself and keep myself really excited so that those motherfucker who that time was gone who and then was no or no however is are watching my film i'm a bengali filmmaker which bengali filmmaker has people in kerala trying to understand what they will do next it has never happened before because i have i was very lucky i was in that cusp time the time that i became a filmmaker was extremely killer in our country's context nobody was interested digital technology was coming in and there was a gap of 10 years when those motherfuckers didn't look here you know that's gone now it's gone there's no dslr film making anymore netflix will not give uh, take your film if you shot it on a small phone it's gone again but we had a great time for 8 or 9 years they did not know what the fuck i was doing how this can go there like what 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 i didn't sanction this how the fuck did we get to sundance so and 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 the conscious rebutting like for instance like right now chaitanya has made disciple it's a watershed moment in our cinematic history okay there not five people know about it nobody cares what he did is unimaginable that kid right he's first of all he's 
like possibly our best filmmaker right his his fucking mind is so clear it's almost en- you know enviable and then he hustled fucking coro exactly you know and 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 hello you're not even seeing that as a fuck the country country we live in a gandu country we know it's okay are you are saying art film art film you are into art film you know all these one fucking things where are you right now you do you know what happened in venice and this is the problem because chaitanya is not me he will not make a song and dance and show his ass so that people will say oh bencho remember that guy who showed his ass to so i am a lesser creator but i understand as a producer of uh, a parallel narrative i refuse to call it just a film there are many other things that we produce uh, but we are always producing parallel narrative it is not the market dynamic i am not going to tell you that story that everyone wants me to tell you i will trouble you tempt you don't taunt you you know i will do all those things that they are not doing they are playing your game right but i while i will not play your game i still ask you to see to look and that's been a fundamental gap in our system because art film makers don't get that right yeah so this is art film making that's the market film making ye yahan pe hai wo wahan pe chal raha hai and never the two will meet and is that the reason why if, like say someone whose whose film is does not have say like to put it very crudely whose film does not have assets showing or whose film does not have full frontal nudity or something will find it even hard to get into festivals exactly exactly no no not festi- fest i wouldn't say that festivals actually don't like the boobs and the ass it's really tough to actually get into an alis festival a guy yeah. like me yeah. it. no no but i was again i'm saying i was super lucky at that that was a very pivotal time so things were shifting so. gandu was the first viral thing we did not know what a viral thing is broadband speeds at that point were such that you would finally download it will download in two days yeah but that was poor hai na yeah We I were, remember it had two seeds. A torrent had two seeds, and I. <laughs> yeah. But it was amazing because at that point, I, this whole alternative world opened up, man. The whole world that is happening outside of our uh, knowledge, people who, like for instance, this is a, my pet question, so I'll ask you this month. This month. Uh, so tell me. uh who runs the internet i don't know who does like how the fuck is this happening that you are typing www. and then it's fucking free someone says the algorithms are running the internet who's writing them yeah exactly who's writing them must be us don't you know you okay you you live in a house do you have a whatever you you have teeth you have to brush it every day na yeah they'll fall out otherwise no yeah so there is something called life something called death in the middle there is maintenance right who the fuck maintains the internet how is it so robust how is it that it never lets you down it is always loading and it's fucking free and they don't even want you to know who did it there's no credit sequence yeah i get it yeah so i i am a huge believer and and and, and most respectful to um this idea of open source coding and i don't know who among you maybe a lot of people have heard of this or 
maybe they haven't if you haven't then please find out if you have then you are my friend i'll give you another reference point which perhaps will uh, illustrate this why i'm saying this as of now i have made 11 films of them eight are online there are short films and all i'm not talking about the, like the long format films eight are online as an Indian, you don't have to pay to watch any of my films. You pay Netflix or or whoever else. You're not paying me. There's no direct transactional service that I'm offering you. Therefore, if you're not buying, if my what I am making is what, what what is it becoming it's becoming a non product it is no longer a product when you can't buy something it it it, it refuses to be consumed right so you may or may not know this that's irrelevant you see because this is the meta logic of data management these algorithms which run our world right now and run you and me and are eavesdropping on this conversation right now. I've been following this shit since the, you know, 99, 2000. That's what I, I, I'm, I, I'm a big geek in, in this, which is why I got the DSLR, which is why I'm like into lo-fi stuff, you know, open source, like stuff that is free, accessible, which takes out this fundamental gatekeeping, this fundamental elitism. That when you to film school, you to film camera and This Brahminism that is, is the law of our everyday life in India. It's a fight against that, and one of the key points in that fight is open source code. The fact that I, a Gandu, can make a film. Or DSLR, it can go to Berlin, makes 10,000 other Gandus think, it is that opportunity. It's that this also can happen. Try it out. So, in that way, I don't think I'm servicing more the audience. I'm servicing the community, rather, you know. Right. But it's not like, uh, you know, as you mentioned that it's, but it's, it's still that, that gatekeeping is still there. I mean, you haven't come no, Obviously it'll be there, man. They are running it. Why won't they protect it? They made the fucking castle. They'll let you in. Uh, you're a Chutya venture. Uh, feet are dirty. Why will they let you in there? Which one of us, man? So coming from that, now going into Brahmanaman. Which I think is your most, uh, most not uh, the stuff that we are used to seeing when, uh, like, you know, coming from you. And it's, it has, it's the most classical structured film, if I may say so. Yeah. What got into, uh, what got you into Brahmanam? Oh, um, it's like, uh, it's quite documented. Basically, I got a mail from this guy called Steve. And he said, uh, hello, I'm Steve. And uh, would you, like to uh, read this uh, treatment that we have in an extremely uh, British way. Uh, so if you have the time, uh, you may want to uh, go by this uh, narrative and see if it suits your fancy. So and I opened it Raman Raman by Naman Ramachandran. I know Naman Ramachandran. Is it the same Naman Ramachandran? I call him. He, you didn't tell me. Is it your film? Is it your script? Yeah. Why the fuck didn't you tell me? Why? Who is this Steve Baron? Naman is like, Sir, I, I refuse to talk to you. You please spit on this left side and please drown inside that spit. That is what is good for you. If you do not know who Steve Barron is. So I was extremely uh, embarrassed. I quickly found out. Steve Barron 
is the guy who made uh, the semin most seminal music videos from the 80s beat it everything beat it to yeah, yeah, fucking, that, okay that's Steve that's okay. fucking Steve Barron dude teenage ninja turtles that guy mailed me saying would you care to look at the script if you have some time motherfucker I'm like listen I have never got that mail again before that I never got it and I'm pretty sure it'll never come again <laughs> just, just, it just ha I was I was extremely lucky it was that time he was supposed to make Brahmana he was supposed to be the day oh. and then he watched my films first he watched Gandhi then he got very intrigued so he watched a couple of more films he asked Naman whether he knew me and Naman is like of course Naman is a motherfucker so he's you're not going to give anything up like he didn't tell me about Steve he didn't tell Steve about me so he's like yeah yeah I know him whatever Steve is like you know this guy should make this because he know it seems like he has that you know thing and I have always been a huge fan of British comedy that's like you know Monty Python and uh, I mean that that's that's the classic shit that other mad comics Monty Python you know if you want to look at the West for uh, inspirations these were clear uh, inspirations right anarchist stuff but at the same time a serbic in your face at the same time totally cute like you don't know how to deal with this so and the script was fantastic it was just I mean the Naman is a very accomplished writer so I was like this is amazing like I don't even have to write this shit this shit is written and all I need to do is to, you know, and, and everyone thought, you know, these two things still probably do. I don't know much, right? So, so I know how filmmakers see me. So, uh, this is a great opportunity. Period piece, classic British comedy. Camera can sit down. And I don't have to move, you know, because it's already written. I, I know I'm not writing. Normally, what I do is I write while I'm shooting. Yeah, that's how I do. I'm a rapper. I'm I, I'm in, it's it's like you know, um, uh, improv. Whereas here, it was amazing because I had I had Naman and Steve Barrett to work with, like. What the fuck? And for me, all I wanted to do were the animation sections to fuck history. Because he's the guy who invented, invented as in, he utilized yeah. rotoscopy for the first time in the AHA video. He, he revolutionized filmmaking by utilizing animation and graphics. Okay. He fucking made beat it analog. Okay. And I, I even met the motherfucker who was the art director who was punching the buttons when those lights were, the, the street was lighting up. Okay. And, and uh, just to tell you a cool story, that Steve Barron was really big at that time. Like he was a big director. Uh -huh. and video ventures, like that kind, you know, the shiny uh, guy. And Quincy Jones's office calls him Tells him there's a guy, uh, you know, would you want to make a video? There's this new artist, he's quite nice, he's called Michael. And if you if you want, he can come and meet you. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 an amazing thing was uh, we were shooting in Mysore, and you know, in India, if you go to a pub, any pub, any fucking pub in India, if you go to, chances are at one point they'll start playing a playlist which is all made by Steve. Like, we love those songs. We're like, Madonna, Aventure, Michael Jackson, Abhi we sun bro. And nobody listens to that there. So, yeah. Steve is like a long forgotten guy. And here in my soul, they're like, are you guys playing this shit or are they playing it? Like, <laughs> this is real. <laughs> oh, man. So, but is that, like, is that all it 
like matlab that this is something that has been like you have spoken about it before but what i was asking is that it has a script which is which is you know it falls into the zone of british comedy it's in english and and everything and you said that you don't know your way around this kind of a stuff what was no, it no, that, that i didn't say that i just said that i choose not to do that but that's yeah, I mean, fucking easy i mean okay okay it's so easy yeah you put a bachcha you will make a you will be makmal ba if you are slightly smart okay <laughs> and you if you are at the right time yeah if nobody has done it that before you just find a right thing to do a new thing at the right time the easiest way to do it and you will be fucking huge it's a but, formula yeah but 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 still it followed a very convent like the way you shot yeah, those it's is not a pro- it's so easy to do that it was the easiest film of my life okay it was so easy they eventually ja rahe hain aaj char scene karne ka i have never had that before i have to normally shoot 10 to 15 minutes a day that's the kind of budgets that i have to work with i have never in my life shot over like 20 22 days for a feature film where i know that the standard is 35 40 for a director like with of my stature i am working q you no know? yeah i should get 5 55 days no motherfucker idea was that because these guys all the actors were bachchas and they had no clue what the ideas were like we decided that they, we will all stay in one house in mysore for three months and inside that house it will be 1982 so we created a like a set almost where we all used to stay in this big house 17 people were in it and everyone's phones were taken off in the morning and given back to them when they go to bed and we had to everyone had to live the 80s life now we have we, both naman and i we have mirror uh, lives almost both boka chudas both like this way and all so and but the main difference is that i am a smoker and naman's a drink naman's a drinker everyone knows and it's quite uh, clear that i do drugs and i was a teetotaler and i kind of looked down on people who drank okay i was super judgmental and uh, <laughs> chill out now i am doing a film about an alcoholic or alcoholics all of them yeah and so is naman yeah and these guys are learning method is happening no phone 80 style living what am i doing so i decided to become an alcoholic so my struggle for three months was to drink myself silly and learn from the great master naman and slowly now i am amazing i am a full alcoholic <laughs> and uh, not only that i have even i have we have our own bar wow <laughs> that sort of There's a moment in Brahman Aman that really is. I mean, it was a very, it was a very amazing moment when he gets out when they run out of the brothel, uh, and because they're shit scared and you know, uh, and they start uh, exchanging trivia. And there's this amazing line that Brahman Aman uh, says that that's all we have trivia. Uh, since you didn't write the script, like, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that moment? Because that was basically when we actually got to know this. Uh, idiot who's you know he doesn't know his shit. All he knows is yeah. this bookish stuff. So can you talk a little bit about that moment? What was that in the script like? Yeah, so I mean, obviously the script was so worked out, and Steve and Naman had worked on it for two hours, uh, two years before it came to me. Oh. Okay, so obviously these two really uh, like people knew what they were doing, and when it came to me, it was, it was like. Who fits the city? You know, every punchline drop, every line was a fucking punchline. 
and the the punch lines were not overt you know like when uh, Na- naman uh, sits on ajay's scooter and randy is there for the first time at the bench and uh, they decide to go after rita and uh, and uh, randy says uh, so what am i supposed to do and naman says exist I, that's one of my fun, the funniest moments of that film <laughs> for me and i'm like all i have to do is to find that oh, it's about timing right yeah how so i decided to shoot it that way we were never changing angle we will forever be looking at naman straight is he straight guy this is square motherfucker i can look at him from this way and that yeah and then secondly we decided to go with the 50 lens throughout so that's naman samne aega piche aega it's always going to be that 50 lens that's the way he sees his world so mm, coming to that moment where uh, like all i have to then basically do is facilitate an atmosphere okay so the atmosphere was largely in that scene uh, for me my control mechanism was tanmay not shasha tanmay mm, did something amazing in the rehearsals uh, while we were rehearsing the scene okay so we figured it out kaisa repeat hoga ha 34 different ways of saying this all that shit we did and it was still like you know full stop punctuation nahi hai uske uske baad cut hai what do i do after that and at the time we are shooting tanmay looks and full serious face this is correct and i thought there was a most british humor moment like he we just achieved the clerks kind of situation you know a napoleon dynamite moment where it's so under the humor that perhaps our immediate circumstance won't even get it but that's not the point the point is we hit a sweet spot you know there's a really cool note because after that line if he didn't say correct and break it i don't know where to go from there because suddenly it's become heavy now yeah so the one last question that i have from you uh before we before we open up to questions from the audience uh one last question i have i'm going to ask you the same thing that you uh, that you asked uh, navarinda in the end of the documentary is that this cult rock star image that you have and the youngsters like me and everyone who's there who admire you is it because we get a kick out of uh what you do out of your language out of the you know out of, out of the shock value is it because of that or do you feel that you know as you mentioned your films are politically motivated motivated do you feel that it's because of that look i have always admired musicians much more than filmmakers they are like way cooler filmmakers are normally fat men <laughs> who are generally not getting laid they have to do different things to get laid you know what i mean <laughs> so now they have to make films to get laid <laughs> thankfully that is not my case i have always looked up at musicians for you know that it's a performance there's a very very cool story about which said mirza told me. so he said you know we are, we are sitting in this class first day in fpi it's a fucking star studded class i can't tell who all are there everybody is there all the motherfuckers who are doing right now or have for the last two decades enter rithik roshan dean he says so tell me your names oh uh, well, sir ketan mehta the said mehta sir is sir that 14 people were there in the direction department 14 people said their names rithik khatto is holding his head and leaves 
leaves, man. These guys are fucked. Riti Kotok just left. What did they do? What, what is the... What should they do now? So some of them got like some courage, went to the staff room. Sir knocked. Sir, sorry, we did not understand. Um, we made some mistake. What? But I'm just, I'm just sad. That's none of you will be directors. Okay. Why, sir? Why are you saying this? Your names. Is this the name of a director? Ketan Mehta. Director's name will come. A film by Christoph Kislinski. A film by Riti Kumar Khatak. What is Ketan Mehta? So, the next day, man, the whole class gave themselves new names. They became Syed Anwar Meza. They became Vidu Vinod Chopra. They gave themselves a middle name. It's, it's the artist identity. Now you're no longer Vinod Chopra. You are a performer, a director, what Italians call a realizer, which is a much better name for what we do. We have an idea and try to make it real. Okay. Realize that idea. And, and, and to do that, you can't be common. You can't be everybody. That's a functional instrumental pivotal point if you are committing yourself to be what you claim to be if you're an artist who's the fucking artist it's prince it's bob dylan it's not that motherfucker who came from long island no it's not koshik mukherjee it's a cube it's another thing. It's altogether one more different entity. And when that comes, a film by Q. Oh, wow. excitement. What the fuck is the excitement in that? I am not excited. How will, how will I excite you? But a film by Q? Wow. Yes, now we are on to something. Now it's no, and what Nobalunda said, as you said, he smiled and he acknowledged that he fucking used it. And and why won't you? You know, Nozrul Islam, uh, a very vibrant poet who we've forgotten, we like him a lot. Uh, he used to wear these outrageous mm, kurtas. This is 1920, 1920s, 1920, yeah. And he used to wear this like colorful stuff. Kolkata, like Kolkata is becoming gentrified and all that. They didn't like it. Everybody wears white dhoti panjabi. It's very solid and solid. This beach may eventually, first of all, Muslim, then he's a communist, atheist motherfucker, drinks and makes a scene. Nothing is, you can't put the so one day, one guy asked Nojul Islam, Aja, Nojula, why, why do you wear such outrageous clothes? He said, otherwise, how will people know I am Nojul and I'm not you? Fuck. It's that fucking simple. You're a performer. You're selling that shit, man. I'm a joker. I will show you, show you my test, left testicle. Aja, aja, left testicle. Dekho. Because the market is not allowing me to sell my wear there. They are showing you their testicle. Your faces are full of testicles. And if I don't do something really radical, you will not look at me. 
Thank you so much. Well, I'm changing my name tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so questions, guys, please. So great admire of you, Q. So I have two very short questions. First of all, uh, you came from an advertising background, and I just wanted to you uh, ask that how how quickly did you grab yourself like you saw at least you know in a very short period of time you saw almost all the world cinema which kind of resonated with you and the surprising thing is how did you learn to uh, the camera because most, almost all of your films you are the dop so how did you master your yourself into these two technical aspects whereas your films are all like is more of politics so being a bengali and all that from calcutta i have grown up with this more in this atmosphere of intellectual uh, existence right which we are really proud of uh, so that i of course no be a boring i think that we haven't done anything in the last 50 years but not 50, 30 years at least um so one of the reasons why i was not interested at all in cinema was because of bengalis <laughs> i knew all the bengalis were into cinema i was like fuck you i'm i'm into trance <laughs> i i i'm going into something that no bengali will like 142 bpm fucking electronic music that's what i'm going to do and in the middle of that in sri lanka i suddenly met lola of ran lola ran and she had the same color hair that i had at that time so we love at first sight it was not cinema it was lola and i just wanted to run with her you know and i i thought I watched that film three times that day and i was like dude i can do this this is something i could do like you said the advertising background really helped because the advertising gives you gives you a lot of false confidence you see most people who are utter failures in life do really well in advertising it's a great place for failures so i was a great fit i was a total failure went into advertising did really well spectacularly well i was a creative director at 25 and all that of google vdd v whatever and i could also direct films like direct commercials i had already made about 50 uh, commercials before i watched a single film with some intention i was that much a motherfucker like most people in advertising they don't care about it so i didn't care but when i watched ranlo rana i realized oh shit now i know what i have to do and then i have to now learn what what all things i i have to uh uh i have to adapt in order to do this because while i'm watching ranlo rana i i know that there there is no dop in in bombay that i know of and i knew all the dop right i'm i'm making advertising commercials i was the creative director of vdp and ogilvy i was working with the best model workers right they charge like 1 lakh a day and all that at that time big cameramen and i knew them i knew that they everything was hired for them they they hired their fathers they hired their junta the cameras also on hire nothing is there that when 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 gandu in his song says no that um tumara ma baba me balish bichhana kichu tomar noy shob installment again it's all on emi okay nothing is really yours so i was like fuck dude but i at that point in advertising i had the means to buy a handy cam and i was like shit man Why can't I make my fucking run low run with handy cam? Then I got into dogma. Then I realized that okay, I, I they won't let me touch the film camera because I'm not an institute passer. That's how Brahministic the system was. He is still. So I was like, fuck you. I'm going to keep job. So much I am not there. Mere gulya pe on kar. That's all. You don't even need to focus. and then it's only uh, it's about craft once you are a filmmaker then you then you want to become better and uh, then you learn then you learn about composition then you learn about and when i knew that i did not i will not have money 
nobody wants to watch whatever I want to make. And I want to make this fucking bullshit. Nobody will work with me also. I knew that. So I started preparing myself. I started learning editing. I started learning camera. Because, uh, I mean, pretty much I can't get a DOP to work with me if I don't pay them a lot of money, which I won't. Okay, got it. And second, a quick, quick short question is about the politics in your films. So, uh, starting from Gandhu and before that, the leftist kind of ideologies and other uh, things are very evident in your films. Do you think that is the main reason? Because today, looking at the environment uh, in internet and across also, so today you are more relevant and you are more beneficial for certain people. So do you think that you kind of graduated on that opportunity accidentally? And that is also the reason because for the next 10 years of you making films, you will be making films. Because you are certainly catering to a few people unknowingly, maybe. No, no. I don't think it's anything is unknowing. Because everything is very, very conscious. Mm. The idea is about conscious living, right? Uh, and and, and for, from, the, I don't know when, I don't, I don't know, maybe, uh, when I was very young, like, I was brought up by this communist father who didn't allow any American stuff. I didn't know who was Mickey Mouse till I was 13. And it was very embarrassing because I, I, I had no idea what the fuck was uh, Mickey Mouse. Uh, I knew Misha and Sputnik. I used to read Sputnik because in, in my house there was only Russian stuff. <laughs> and in Bangla. Uh, okay. Everything was translated in Bangla. One of the key people who were doing it was Navarandha. Navarandha used to work as a translator in the Soviet uh, uh, publishing uh, department. So, uh, so yeah, I was I was always brought I was brought up like that. I, I can't help it. I went into advertising to spite my father and to inadvertently learn about the enemy. And I have always known that that's that my place where I'm very sure of where I belong and what I, my uh, politics is uh, fight about sexual and social identity and I do it through my life and whenever possible I do I try to do it through any kind of medium it may be a film it might be a book it might be a, a song anything um, so uh, so so I'm, I'm pretty conscious about the fact that who I'm reaching out to. It's not that, oh, achha, it's, uh, to pata chalega. Nee, it's quite conscious. We, I, I know that there must be other Gandhus like me. And like me, they don't have anything to watch. That tells them that story in that way, in that language. And I felt that there was that need and if I felt that consciously, it's, it's going to come true. So when I start making films, immediately there are people who are watching. I was told repeatedly that you will be, stones will be thrown at you, this, that, and that. I don't even get told. People are so, so scared that I will tell them something or do something, fart on their face and you know, jack off or some shit like that. And I will, possibly. So, so these are all conscious moves. You know, one of the biggest things about the tantrics or agoris is that whatever we know of them is that So one of the key things there is that any subaltern practice, any subversive practice, if you're doing something which is not permitted by the mainstream, chances are that you'll get fucked. So you should have firewalls. So what the Agwaris do mostly is firewalling you. Okay, they're drinking out of monkey's skull and all that. You're you're thinking, oh, holy shit, they're drinking blood. But they're showing you that almost because they don't want you to go and disturb them. It's a conscious choice. So therefore, that politics that you're talking about is 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 conscious, and I know that this is not some sort of straight leftism that we are talking about clearly I, 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 as I said I was born to a communist father I am not a communist I don't believe in socialism either like that the fundamental way that 
leftist belief in, in India. I have never been a part of any organization like that. But I am a committed leftist. And because I think that the world should be just. And that's not a great thing to ask. It's not a big thing to ask. And if every artist thinks that it's okay, I'll do my gig, the world is not just fine. That's their shit to say. My point is that I am not going to do that. I will not. Once I took that call, I have not done a gig in the last 20 years. Not one gig. You don't think Q could get a Benetton ad or some Reebok ad or something like one ad yeah, one once every three or four months. So this is intrinsically linked to our economic reality. We run a company with people working who get paid every month, but we don't do any gigs, no commercial work. And as I said, we are always uh, fighting with budgets. We never get that money. If I get money easily, I will be very uh, scared. If someone just comes and tells me, I'll be very scared. I will, I will like really think 105 times why that fucker is doing this. What okay. is the agenda? And because I have my agenda, and they have theirs. You might think that um, the Bollywood filmmakers don't have politics. They do. They are fucking constantly spreading their politics. Exactly. Their that take more take us today. Yes, they are right wing motherfuckers. They are pressing that patriarchal bullshit logic into the consciousness of the country on a daily basis. Abhishek, please unmute yourself and keep, uh, keep it to one question. And because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because you mentioned about suburban practice, I've seen your performances and seen a lot of influence of the Hungarian movement. And so I just wanted to ask, how has the movement and the rebel poet? The, the, the rebel poetry school has affected your body of work or your school of thought. Of course, one of the um, really insane and really intense uh, things that I was doing and I'm really unhappy that I can't keep doing it. It's so fucking difficult to set these things up because nobody wants to pay or, I mean, for experiment stuff, experimental stuff. Last year, I was doing this uh, series of uh, performances where uh, I, I, I took Fal Falguni Rai's uh, poetry, uh, who's one of the Hungarians, the last one, the, the youngest one. and my most favorite. Um, and uh, I was like fibbing with it. Like, you know, uh, I, I really feel that they were rappers. They were NWA of, of Bengal, or Hungarians. That's my Ice Cube and Dr. Dre, you know. That's how I see them. Fucking cool motherfuckers. Niggas took the, the shit on. They were rapping in Howrah Station, man. And they stopped trains and all, you know. They did some killer shit. At the same time, they're patriarchal, they're all men. They're, all that shit is also there. <coughs> but I really like doing a, a, this uh, series of concerts, which I... Uh, would want to keep doing called burnt poems where i would take uh, uh Alguni's poetry work with a noise artist who's creating texture noise and then i am i create noise with vocals and uh, with my effect effect pedals you tell where gandu is talking to Alguni, like talking back like like two rappers are talking so um so yeah, even Tushar Rai, I mean, I, 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 I'm a great admirer, but at the same time, I also think that there were many, many things uh, potently uh, problematic in the way uh, organizational structures were in, in the 70s leftist politics in Bengal. Though they did some kick-ass stuff, at the same time, they were very, very wrong on many counts. So I, I, I have my respect. I like that's why I prefer Navarunda because he's also kind of post Hungarist, um, where uh, you understand that there's no point just fucking uh, whining about the fact that nobody likes you. Um, just let's just fucking get on with the program, man. It's okay, you know. 
So that that shit is really powerful that I, I feel that Navaranda could tell us um, out of the hungriest experience what should be taken, what can be taken, and introduced to your system, and your system could benefit from that. So yes, I I, I completely agree that I I uh, am indebted to them and for showing me ways to negotiate with them. Okay, thank you, Abhishek. Uh, Amrit, you can unmute yourself. I wanted to know a bit about what happened to Sari, the original documentary and the, the long cut that we saw, and I was expecting that it would come out. But then, very recently, you put out uh, Sari Men's. Nice to see. But just wanted to know a bit more about what happened to Sari, why was the project sales and stuff. Well, I, I you know, it, it, Love in India ends uh, with a sequence where Khalim Poki. Mm. And we are singing this song, Poro Jonam Me Hoyo Radha, which basically Radha is telling Krishna that you know if you, I'm sorry, are not going to get the idea of love at all, simply because you are not a woman. You so in your next life. Try to be Radha, and maybe, you know, just maybe, if you're lucky, you'll get it. Um, so I, I, I was, I was pretty convinced that I, I did not know um, where feminine energy was coming from, where it was going. I was, I thought that I was conscious, but I could not make sense, and 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 there was a lot of um, introspection. Therefore. Uh, and Sari became the tool for that introspection. So for me, Sari was like, okay, now I've made a film about the gap between the genders. Now let me go over to that side. I'm a man. Uh, through the world of Sari, I want to know the complexities of women. Fuck. Imagine taking that bamboo in your own ass. Like nine years later. I have no clue, no fucking idea what that is. It's confounding and it's so complex and so subtle that I have I have no brain to process, assess, and and then actually put something out. So eventually, what happened is that after. Six years of filming all around the subcontinent. I just gave up. I, I gave up on Sari being ever filmed. However, fundamental shift started. I started wearing Sari. So I could make the film, but I know how to wear Sari. And I think that was that is what femininity is. Patriarchy is about make a man making a film, and Sari taught me that film was irrelevant. Can you wear me? Okay, moving on. Astitra, you can unmute yourself. Uh, I just want to say thanks for the session. Really enjoyed hearing these anecdotes and these interesting co cool perspectives. Um, earlier we were talking about mediums and like how you use me. Like sometimes you make a choice about what you want to express based on the medium. And I was interested in your thoughts, perhaps, on VR, right? Like, what are you thinking about VR right now? Because there's a lot of people saying a lot of different things about VR. So just curious. My current um, obsession post-lockdown uh, is that I've been uh, claiming and I, I've made this uh, uh, presentation at various places in colleges and other fora. Uh, the film is dead because if I became a filmmaker, film must be dead, right? <laughs> Fuck! I am a filmmaker, which means film died much <laughs> long, <laughs> many moons back. You know, if film was alive, it wouldn't let me handle her. You know, so my counter there was no counterpoint. I just had this theory that the film is dead. But now I know what, what kind of, where we are going. Because currently the image that we are seeing on this frame, uh, 
uh, all of you guys are seeing, I'm seeing, and the way we are looking at image, the way people treat creation of image has fundamentally shifted. And that shift is because of technology. And what is filmmaking but technology? If there was that not that machine which can, you know, uh, let light in and somehow catch an impression on, on, on a moving piece of uh, plastic. Uh, I mean, uh, all that there is actually the magic is that, that the, those movement at that movement at in 24 frames. So I was thinking that uh, our current reality is an augmented one. Uh, our current reality is very much a virtual one. Uh, and when we made garbage in 2017, I was already feeling that uh, I can't I can't work with this medium anymore. It's just so limiting. It's so passive. It's just, I'm seeing something you guys are watching. What the fuck is that? Like every time I watch my own, watched my own films in various festivals, like a DJ, I was itching to fucking change it. Like why the fuck does this film have to always start with the scene why is it finite that day in in transylvania it's raining and i'm feeling that we should start with the scene where gandhu meets riksha or in tasha Desh, the angel appears you know whatever i feel at that moment i am not like the musician is so free the same song is being sung three hundred thousand times but every time it's a new performance because it's unique. Whereas my heart is finite and limited. So, um, just to answer your question, I can't divulge more. But right now, me and my company are, are working round the clock to develop, to work on a new form. I'm no longer interested in one piece anymore. I may have to make some films and series because I have contractual obligations. But uh, and and those those stories were there to be told. I have not written anything new that I want to make. I don't intend to. And um, from now on, I think my energy will be spent more on augmented reality and uh, less of virtual reality, more of augmented reality and transmedia. Thank you so yeah. much for doing this, sir. Uh, it was great to have time. you. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, guys, Bye. please uh, uh, follow us on Instagram, the whitebirdface.in, uh, like our page on Facebook. Yeah. I'm Dr. Gandhu, by the way, with a K on Instagram. Yeah. So it's hard to find, but please be a friend. Sure. Sure. All right. Ciao. Bye, Amorto. We'll see each other soon. Best of luck with your film, man. Thank you so much.